welcome back, guys. Before the break, obviously, we were looking at partner Craig and Candice, and we calculated interest and capital. We're now moving on to their salaries. Right, so let's look at the information one more time because we may have forgotten stretching a bit. I know, uh, you know, stretch a bit, and then you tend to forget, so let's quickly remind you. Pa uh, the monthly salary for partner Craig, 15,000, so that's what he's entitled to per month. And then we've got partner Candace, an amount of 12,000. So obviously we're focusing on Craig. Now partner Craig is also entitled to a 13th salary. Now in my brain right now, I'm thinking, okay, 13th salary, am I gonna record that as salary or am I going to record the 13th salary as a bonus? Now, if memory serves me correct, and I know we use a number of textbooks, please guys, do exactly what your teacher wants you to do. So you could record for Craig for 12 months, that is his salary, and the 13th month separately as his bonus. Okay, so I'm gonna record it separately, but remember, you could have your teacher saying, or your particular textbook saying, his salary is for 13 months, that is what he's entitled to, so we would then allocate 13 months as his annual salary. Okay, right, so let's do that calculation, 15,000 times 12. Okay, so four partner Craig, uh, let's just quickly go back. Okay, so for partner Craig, 15,000 times 12. Remember, you could multiply this by 13. I'm going to show the bonus separately, and that gives us his annual salary. So 15,000 times 12, and that should be 180,000 for partner Craig. Okay, or if you multiply this by 13, obviously your figure would be different from mine. So you would then say, okay, 15,000 times 13 and his annual salary, 195,000. Okay, right, partner Candace, on the other hand, her annual salary, so her monthly salary for partner Candace is 12,000. She doesn't get a 13 check. So all we're doing is we're taking the 12,000 and we are multiplying the 12,000 by 12. So her annual salary should be an amount of, okay, 12 times 12,000. And that gives us an amount of 144,000. Okay, got that, straightforward. Right, let's now move on. Right, so for the next question, calculate the remaining profit or the loss. Now remember guys, we spoke about this right at the beginning. What do we mean by remaining profit? So in order for you to calculate your remaining profit, you're gonna take net profit that is given to you, you're gonna minus the salary for partner Craig, okay? You're gonna minus the salary for partner Candace. You're gonna do the exact same for the interest, so minus the interest on capital for both partners, okay? So for Candace and for Craig. And if there's any bonus, obviously we're gonna minus the bonus as well. That would now give us our remaining profit. So let's now do that calculation together. So let's go back to our information that is given to us. So as you can see, the net profit amounted to 1,200,000. So I'm starting with that, 1,200,000 minus the salary for Craig. So let's quickly go back to our calculation. So remember Craig, 
I'm going to use the 195,000 so I don't have to show the bonus separately. But remember, if you show the bonus separately, you've got to include that in your calculation of remaining profit. Okay, so Craig, 195,000, so minus 195,000, right? And remember, this is including that bonus. That's why I'm not showing it separately, guys. Minus for Candace, what was her salary? So Candace was 144,000, so let's fill that in. Minus 144,000. Then minus the interest on capital for both Candace and Craig. So we're going to have to go back a few slides just quickly to get that calculation, right? So interest on capital, there we go. Craig was 90,000, Candace was 75,000. So let's fill that in, 90 and 70,000. So minus 90,000 minus the 70. Oh, I'm going to have to go back, guys. I remember the 90, but it wasn't 70, it was 75. There we go, minus 75,000. Right, so minus... 75,000 and again no bonus because obviously I showed that bonus part already or the 13 check and now let's look at the remaining profit so let's get our calculator out okay let's quickly sort that out right so a hundred one million two hundred thousand that's my net profit minus 195,000, okay, I'm just going to move that, okay, so then minus 144,000, let's fix that, 44,000, there we go, and then finally minus the interest, which is 90,000 and 75,000. So minus the 90, minus the 75,000. And that gives us a remaining profit of 696,000. Okay, 696,000. So that's my remaining profit. So as you can see, there's obviously a difference between remaining profit and net profit. What's the profit after the salary, after the interest and in capital, after the bonus? What is that profit that is remaining? Okay, right, let's move on. The next question, which should be the final question, calculate each partner's share of remaining profit. So remember that remaining profit was 600 and Let's just go back before we share that profit, 696,000, right? How are we going to further share the remaining profit? So from our information that we have, remaining profit and losses are shared between the partners according to their capital balances at the end of the financial year. So remember, this is not necessarily their capital balances at the end of the year. We spoke about this earlier on. So Craig, it was 1 million, because remember his increase was recorded, but Candace, on the other hand, it was 600,000. We did this, guys. I'm not gonna go back to it. So it was 600,000. Right, so if I had to simplify this, right, I would obviously, um, if I get rid of all the zeros, right, so I'm dividing it in the ratio of 10 is to 6. I can further divide this or further uh, decrease this ratio if I divide by 2. So I'm dividing it in the ratio of 5 is to 3. Am I correct? 10 divided by 2 is 5. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that should be correct. So, all right, so let's just take that ratio through. Right, so we're looking at a ratio of five is to three. So clearly, guys, Craig, as you can see, gets five 
eighth of the pie of the remaining profit, and Candice, on the other hand, three eighths of that share of remaining profit. Where am I getting the eight from? Obviously, five plus three gives us the whole, which is eight, the whole of the remaining profit, the entire remaining profit. Craig will get five eighths, while Candace three eighths. And now it's quite easy. So all I'm going to do, multiply that by 696,000. Do the same for Candace, multiply by 696,000. Okay, let's get the calculator out quickly. Right, so I've already got 696,000, divide that by eight times five, right? And Craig's share is 435,000, so 435,000, while Candace Deer gets an amount of 696,000. Okay, divide by eight, right, times three, and her share is 261,000. And remember, I can always double check. So remember, this is the total. And if I add these two amounts, am I getting that remaining profit? So let's quickly double check that we are getting that. So 290 or 261,000 plus 435,000 and that gives us an amount of 696,000. So as you can see, we didn't make a mistake. Okay, right, we're gonna move on because I really like the next question because we're done with this particular question, right? Let's now move on to a bit of analysis. I know we don't have that much of time, but let's see what we can cover. Here we are asked to study the current accounts provided and answer the following questions, right? So let's first study the accounts and then we'll go to the questions. So here's the accounts that's given to us. Now we're moving away from Candice and Craig. We're now given, right, still CC traders, okay? But we're now given the current accounts of Tubby and Sarah, I want you guys now to think this is a completely different business. So we've got two partners, Tubby, and we've got Sarah, and we are given the current accounts. Okay, you guys with me? Right, what am I expected to do? So let's go to the actual question itself. Study the current accounts provided and answer the following question. Which partner is not adhering to the partnership agreement? Now, we are not given the partnership agreement, but we're given the current account. Quite a big word, not adhering, simply means not following, right? Breaking that partnership agreement. So we've got Tubby and we've got Sarah, and someone's being a bit naughty. They're not following the terms and the conditions and what was agreed upon. So let's see who is not following that partnership agreement. Right, now if we look at Tubby, we're gonna examine his current account. So we've got an opening balance, right? Current account. Then we've got the salary that he's entitled to, interest on capital and appropriation. So we've got what he is entitled to versus what he has taken. Okay, so let's see whether he's taken too much or he's still entitled to take from the business. Now, how are we gonna do that? By obviously balancing this particular account. So if I now grab my calculator, okay, so Tubby started with a credit balance of 20,000, which is favorable, right? He was then entitled to 120,000 plus 80,000 plus remaining profit of 35,000 minus what has Tubby taken? So Tubby has taken 225,000 for the entire year. Now, as you can see, Tubby, mm, quite 
favorable, 30,000, he's still entitled to 30,000. So he hasn't taken more than what he is entitled to. So Tubby ends up with a credit balance. Can you all see that, right? A credit balance. He's still entitled to take from the business. He hasn't taken everything that he was entitled to. So for me, Tubby, well done. Okay, Tubby, well done. Let's just put a smiley face next to Tubby. Well done, Tubby. Okay, right. On the other hand, Sarah. Now, Sarah started off with a debit balance. As you can see, she's got a debit balance. And I don't, I might run out of time, so I might not take my calculator out. But if we examine from the amounts given, guys, right? You can do this as accounting students. From the amounts given versus, right? She overtook 30,000 in the previous year. She withdrew more in the previous year, not too nice, right? And as you can see, even in the current year, if you compare what she's entitled to, can you see she's also withdrawn more than what she was entitled to? So Sarah, hmm, Sarah, you're not being too good there. You're not following the terms of the partnership agreement. Right, now guys, unfortunately, I think I've got just a minute left, so I can't write down a summary of this, but I think you guys got it, right? I examined the two current accounts, and remember, Tubby had a credit balance. Sarah would have ended up with a debit balance. Debit balance, I've taken too much. I've taken more than what I should have taken. Okay, right, hopefully that helped. And we have come to the end of our lesson. So very quickly, guys, please make sure that you know how to draw up your appropriation account, your current accounts. Again, practice, practice, practice. Uh, for accounting and analysis and interpretation of information, vital, absolutely critical. Until next time, it's time for me to say goodbye, good luck, God bless, stay safe, and I'll see you guys soon. Yeah.